In this tutorial, we'll look at how we can uh, simulate a rotor that's getting rotated because of the flow and not because of the uh, rotation that's enforced on it, like how it was done in the earlier simulation. So this uh, animation here shows you how we simulated earlier in my previous tutorial a case of an imposed rotation uh, of the rotor. So here the rotation is independent of the flow, it's always rotating at a fixed angular velocity. But now we want to solve, we want to simulate a more realistic case in which we uh, have auto rotation. So how do we do that? So first for that we need to answer some questions that how does, a f how, how does the fluid rotate the rotor? So if you think about it, uh, you would be able to reduce that because of the flow, there are forces and moments acting on the rotor and the forces and yeah, so in order to calculate the forces, you would need the density that you would need to specify in case you are working with an incompressible solver as we were before with pimple form. You would need to specify the moment of inertia of the body and also about the axis of rotation, about the rotation uh, axis about which the object rotates and also you need to answer how the rotation is handled by the mesh in case of induced rotation. So here it is handled by a 60 OF solver, mesh motion solver. It is different from what we had in the previous case, which was a solid body motion solver. So if we are able to answer these questions through the dictionaries uh, and the properties in the open form case, we'll be able to simulate our case. So I have uploaded the case files, which you can download to get started with this tutorial. So these have all the required settings. So let's go, I already have them downloaded. So these are the three folders required to simulate your case. Let's open it up in the terminal. Let's start our open form environment. Um, I'll just switch the setting. I'll make the fonts a little bigger. So we are working with open form 2012 version. It's the ESI version. Let's look at the files. So let's look at the changes that we need to make in each of these folders. We have these three, right? So let's go to the constant one and it has the dynamic mesh ticked as earlier, but you will notice that this is different than what was, the entries are different than the previous case. So in order to make sense of all this, you need to know that you were, or you, you have watched the earlier video. So this here you see that the solver is 60 UF rigid body motion and it has these settings or entries that you need to specify. So uh, yeah, so the entries here are these. If you want a detailed explanation of each of these entries, then I suggest you go to this web page here. I'll link it in the, uh, I'll also link it in the, uh, in, in the description of my videos. You can have a look there, but I'll explain the necessary ones to get started with simulation here. So the first thing that we specify is the patch. That is the uh, that's your body. That's your that you're rotating with the rotor in, in. For I have named it the box because it's a rectangular box. So let us see what it looks like. So I've just uh, I've just opened up a, a geometry in Mesh Lab just to tell you. Uh, about what six degree of freedom means. So six degree of freedom means there are obviously six degrees of freedom. So three uh, three in the, so you have translation in the X, Y, and Z direction and also rotation about those three axes. So a six degree of motion solver lets you obtain all these motions in your solver. So you can have, so if the flow is, if the fluid is acting on this body because of the forces, the body is able to move in any of those six, uh, you can have any of those six degrees of freedom but we don't want that because ours is a rotation case and we just want the body to rotate about a fixed axis so the way to do that is by providing constraints so you see there are two entries that we here that we have here the first is called the fixed point constraint so in that what we do is we specify a point about which uh, it can rotate so if i specify that fixed point constraint you can see that it is only rotating uh, about that point. So the center of, so we fix, this is the point that we specify. And once we specify that, you can see that it only rotates about that center. So it can have all the three uh, uh, rotation, three degrees of freedom 
along uh, the three axes, I mean the rotational uh, degrees of freedom, but it does, it cannot translate. So we have done one thing, but we do not want the rotation to be about any axis. We just want it to about, we just want it to be about the uh, Z axis. And for that, we specify that let the body only rotate about the Z axis. So once you specify that, once you specify the axis of rotation, then your body is only going to rotate about that axis. So this is only for illustration. I've just created a simple STL file which, I'll, which I'm illustrating in my lab. So that is what happens. When you specify these two constraints, you get a body that only rotates about a axis. Yeah, there are also restraints that you can specify. These are basically some sort of springs that you can maybe have that will provide reaction forces uh, or some sort of damper, but we were not looking at this now. So I've left this as empty. We need constraints. We don't, we don't, we don't necessarily need restraints for the simulation. Let's look at some other entries. What we have, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, so we need to specify uh, the center of mass. That we specify the center of the body itself. The mass, you would need mass when you're calculating forces because mass, uh, you need, in F equals MA, you need the mass of the body. You also need the moment of inertia about the three principal axes. Since ours is only about the Z direction, so we only need to care about the moment of inertia, the third component of the moment of inertia. Also because it's an incompressible solver, you would need density to calculate forces and you would need to specify the value of density that you use. So we specify the here as one. The solver for the mesh motion is a new mark. There are many options available, but we have chosen new mark. These two are the settings that control mesh morph. So we'll look at what that is. Uh, in order to understand what mesh morphing is, uh, so basically you can you control the amount of morphing in the mesh with these two values. Uh, so if we did not have an AMI or the arbitrary mesh interface, then as the body rotates, as you can see in this illustration here, when the body when the rotor rotates, it's going to it's going to morph the mesh around it. It's going to stretch and you know as it rotates, it's going to change the the mesh around it but we do not want that because we already have an arbitrary mesh interface that, that just rotates we don't want that so we don't we want to avoid morphing because if you morph it all the if the rotor rotates all the way then the mesh will become uh, it will not be uh, good enough anymore because uh, it will get too stressed so we have uh, we already have a solution for that problem we have an arbitrary mesh interface that rotates that part of the mesh rotates with the rotor so we do not want any morphing so in order to do that, we specify uh, the inner distance, that is the distance beyond uh, and inside which the body, the mesh is treated as a solid body rotation. So we specify the distance beyond the AMI interface. So whatever mesh shells are inside that, they are treated as solid body motions. So nothing happens there. And the outer distance is the, so whatever is lies between the inner and the outer distance, that is where the mesh morphing happens. So we specify the outer distance just beyond the inner distance and because again you have a interface between that that doesn't let the deformation happen at all so you do not have any sort of mesh deformation or mesh morphing so by specifying those two distance we get rid of mesh morphing now let's look at what else do you need to change so we go to the system folder system directory and we look at the FE solution so remember, because we have a mesh motion solver, although we are not making use of the uh, morphing, but still we need to specify the solver that the mesh motion solver is going to use. And that is why we need settings for it or some entries for it. So here we specify cell displacement and its corresponding settings. What else do we need to change? Let's go to the zero folder. So you notice you have another file called point displacement. So again, because your mesh is morphing, you need to specify and the mesh morphing basically solves the equation. And because there's an equation, you, just, you need to specify the boundary conditions. So these are the boundary conditions that you can use. It's basically all fixed value. Uh, and for AMI, you have cyclic AMI and uniform 0, 0, 0. So remember, your, when mesh morphing happens, it's basically solving an equation. So you need boundary conditions. And you specify those boundary conditions in point displacement. So once you're done with all that, let us let us uh, just uh, yeah let's look at the mesh first let's look at how it looks like and here uh, when we look uh, yeah so we have the mesh generated already so i'm just 
if you do not then you could run those files or you can just look at the previous tutorial but we already have the mesh generated and it would be also present in the files that you download so you don't need to create the mesh right now so let's just visualize the mesh and see what it looks like so here you see that uh, yeah the mesh is good enough there's a single cell in the z direction there's also the arbitrary mesh interface and there's your rotor at the center now let's go to the control dict and look at the parameters controlling the simulation. So we're using pimple form as earlier. We also have, we simulated for one second with a delta T of uh, 0 0.001 and we write every 50 time steps. We write five every time steps. Let's run the simulation now. Yeah, there's one thing you can do. So here you see that the angular velocities are printed. So you see that the z direction, z component of the angular velocity has certain value. In case you are not, in case you feel that uh, the rotation is taking a lot of time because the moment of inertia might be high and that will cause the uh, rotor to come up to speed at a very high amount of time. So you can reduce the moment of inertia here in case you feel that your rotation is not accelerating it doesn't have the amount of acceleration that you need so but we have as you can see our angular velocity is already reached up to about 0.8 so we don't need to decrease the moment of inertia any further so let us open up paraform and see what the results are maybe look at the edges and also the u uh, field velocity field and there you see that the rotor starts rotating and it's also accelerating so you have uh, simulated the case of auto rotation of a rotor basically induced rotation and i would like so thank you for watching and i'll end this video here